Having a unified Wi-Fi system with access points is a fantastic option for any new home. But how do you know where to put those access points? How do you know where you're gonna get the best signal? Well, the good news is Ubiquiti has your back with a free tool that they call Design Center. And today I'm gonna to show you how to get set up on that tool and start mapping out your access points before the first sheet of drywall ever goes up. Hey guys, it's Tim Trich here with Internet Blueprint. Now, I absolutely love this tool from Ubiquity. I use it all the time in the projects that I'm a part of. However, if you're new to the Ubiquity space, if you're new to this world, it probably is a little bit overwhelming. So I thought I would create a quick video, show you how to get started, show you some of the strategies I use when I do Wi-Fi planning so you guys can start using it on your project. Now, before we get started, I have one little disclaimer. Unified Design Center can actually help you plan more than just your Wi-Fi. It has built-in camera planning, it can build equipment lists, it can help you with your cable mapping, like how you're gonna run the cables in your property. But today's video, we are just gonna focus on the Wi-Fi piece, just so you guys know. Um, if you guys would like to see future videos on those other things, please drop a comment, let me know, and we can work on getting that out to you guys. So here's what we're gonna be covering today, guys. We're gonna talk about setting up an account. That'll be very quick, but I just wanna walk you through the process. We're gonna upload a floor plan and talk about which floor plans are good for this, which ones are bad, and information that you're gonna to need to know to get your scaling right. We're gonna talk about drawing in your walls and ways to kind of approach that. Then we're gonna talk about the fun part, right? Adding access points, dragging them around, you know, placing things, and talk about some Wi-Fi coverage strategies that I use when I'm helping other people with this process. All right, let's get going. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to need to do is open up a browser window and we're gonna head over to design.ui.com. And right away, Ubiquity opens up this wizard and is trying to be very helpful. But if you're just starting out and new to this, I really think it's more probably confusing than anything, but you can see they're trying to help you build a system Ultimately, they want you to spend some money, right? So um, now I find this confusing. I've even clicked around in here just to see if it was helpful. You see this unified GPT like kind of thing, almost like, oh, the system will build it for me. It really doesn't work that way. And I think it's got a little work to do. So let's just go over and create an account and get started that way. So to do that, we're gonna actually click on the little icon over here and it's gonna bring you to our login page. Now. This is going to use a Ubiquity account. You're actually going to create a Ubiquity account if you don't have one, or um, you, if you do have one, you can sign in with that Ubiquity account. That account is what you use to order equipment. It's what you use to sign into your controller when it comes to doing things. There's a single sign-in thing that Ubiquity has that is used for all their stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and just create one because we're starting from scratch. But if you have a Ubiquity account already, you can go ahead and use that to sign in um, by clicking here. So we'll go ahead and say create one. All right, so it looks like they got a little maintenance coming here. So let's go ahead and create a username. Now the username just can't be any spaces. So we'll just do um, ethernet blueprint one because internet blueprint's already taken. Um, I'm just gonna use my ethernet blueprint Gmail. So um, use any email address you want, doesn't matter. Ethernet, just make sure it's a working one because you'll have to verify the email. All right, we're gonna create a password. Now notice down here, password must be at least 12 characters. Uh, it said that before I clicked down there. So it's a longer password than the typical eight. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, agree to the terms. I'm not gonna sign up for newsletters. And we're gonna go ahead and create an account. All right, so now it's saying an email has been sent to this. So let's go ahead and verify that. Okay, so here's what the um, verification email looks like. So we'll go ahead and say, click here to verify your email address. And we'll have it go ahead and open up. Now, multi-factor authentication is gonna be forced to be used um, down the road. I'll probably do another video on that specifically, just so you guys know. But for right now, we're just gonna go ahead 
and skip this and log in. Okay, now we're in. So this is our, this is, now you can see we are on the, at, at an account at Ubiquity, right? So we need to go back over to Design Center. So let's go to design.ui.com. Should keep us logged in. You can see we're logged in, Ethernet Blueprint 1, Ethernet Blueprint. So we are signed in right now. So once you're here, we're going to click. You have this little icon right here, and this is what's going to get us going with a new project. So the new project name is going to be uh, New Home Project. Okay. We're typically doing homes here, but if it is an office, you can do that. Um, we're going to do square foot. And you can just put in your square footage. So we'll just do 2,000. It's fine. 30 users. I don't really know that that matters too much. I haven't messed with it too much. I think this is if you have the system, try to help you design it. But for right now, all we really care about is this kind of this kind of facts. We'll go ahead and say create. And now we will be in here. Now they give you a kind of plan, a sample plan that you can play with right here. So if you want to just move around access points and look at cabling and just kind of play around with it, you are welcome to do so. Um, I'm not going to use this, but I wanted to just let you know why it opens up to this screen. Now you can see these are only broadcasting when I hover over them. So you can actually come over here to Wi-Fi and just turn it on. And this is what we're going to build for your new home that allows us to move things around. Now, these cables is for the cable planning I was talking about. You got cameras here that helps you plan your cameras. We're just gonna focus on the Wi-Fi mapping um, in today's video, but we'll talk through that a little bit and getting it scaled and everything. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this plan. So I'm gonna click on the little settings gear. I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna say remove. So we'll remove that, confirm. All right, so now we're on this screen. We're gonna go ahead and upload a floor plan. Now, typically for this part, you guys are gonna to want to choose a plan that isn't too busy, but you are gonna to need to know dimensions. So a lot of people, when they send me plans, they'll send me like the electrical plans, you know, and the electrical plans are very busy. They got lines, lines drawn all over them. Um, a cleaner plan um, works better for this. However, you will need to know some dimensions so we can get our scale correctly. And so I'll show you what that looks like here. All right, so next to get going, we're gonna go ahead and upload a floor plan. So you can see that it takes PNG files, JPEG files, or PDF files. Now, one little thing about this is, guys, I know you get some really massive files from your builder sometimes and all the architectural drawings and things like that. I would try to maybe avoid that or find a good page in that and maybe take like a screenshot of it. Um, just because I think some of those times those files get a little bit too big for Design Center and it's not going to be effective for you. So, you know, grab a snippet tool down here and take a screenshot of it and just use the screenshot of the page you want to use in here. It'll work a little bit better for you. So we're going to give it a name. I'm going to do two floors, but first we're going to do the main floor. Okay, so we'll talk about that first and then we'll add a second floor and I'll kind of use that when I start talking about strategy uh, for Wi-Fi planning here. So we'll go ahead and hit browse. It's gonna ask us, I saved a couple of my desktop here. So we'll go ahead and say main floor and then we'll go ahead and click upload. It's that easy. Now this, as you can see, is a very nice clean uh, drawing. You are gonna need to know your dimensions and I know they're not listed in here. Now I know my garage is 31 feet across. Um, so as you can see right here, I have a little, you know, thing that has the dimensions. Um, I typically try to find a whole number in my dimensions to trace my line. So 12 feet, zero inches, 31 feet, zero inches, 12 feet, zero inches. I think it helps you with getting accuracy. Okay, so notice none of those are on here. So on your case, yours might include dimensions. Maybe it doesn't. I've seen all kinds of different ones, but this particular one doesn't have dimensions. So we'll just go ahead and add them in. So we're gonna choose two things, our ceiling height, and then our, we're gonna choose our scale. So we're gonna click here to choose our ceiling height. Okay, so we have nine foot ceilings. We'll go ahead and say save. All right, and then it says set your scale. So we'll go ahead and click that. Now it's saying left click your mouse, draw a line, and that's gonna represent the, um, the amount of distance. So we're gonna go ahead and center this over here in the middle of my garage wall, 
draw a line straight over, center it in this wall, and then make sure feet is chosen, and we're gonna say 31 feet. All right, once it knows that, it's able to scale your drawing, and that's how it's gonna give you accuracy or pretty decent accuracy for your Wi-Fi planning. Um, so it's, it's really nice, but you wanna get this part right, guys. Do the best you can to really try and line it up. Find a wall that has you know, exact dimensions so you, know, you can get this piece of it accurate. All right, so this is the floor plan we're gonna use. Um, you can see we got exterior walls. These right here are windows. Those will come into play. This part right here is a back porch, so we're not really gonna draw walls around it. It's open. So we're gonna actually kind of cuts back over here. We'll go around the fireplace. This is a, a covered porch that we have, kind of a wraparound porch, and then our garage. So I'll show you how to do all this and get the walls in here. Now, before we do that, I want to go ahead and add a second floor in here. And that is done by clicking here where it says main floor. You're gonna upload a floor plan. It's gonna bring you to this same screen and you're just gonna do it for your second floor. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of go quickly and I'll get that done for you guys. And then we'll get to drawing in our walls. And say, okay, now you can see one foot equals 183.8. If I go over to my main floor, this is how you toggle. One foot equals 188.35. Pretty close, it's pretty close. All right, so we just want those to kind of match up and be pretty close. You want your scale to be accurate for this. All right, so there's a lot of stuff going on here, guys. You got your Wi-Fi, cameras, turning things off. There's some preferences here you can do. Um, we'll get into all that here. There's placing devices. Now, if you place a device real quick, if you just grabbed, I'll just grab a Wi-Fi 7 Pro, you can see that it's just blasting every direction, right? There's nothing do, it's not restrained in any way because there's no walls. We need to draw walls to create accuracy of our plans. So we'll go ahead and delete this. I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and draw our walls in. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And then uh, I'll kind of speed up some parts here too because um, you know I don't want you to have to, you know, have to watch me just draw a bunch of walls in. All right, so you can, on my mouse, I can kind of scroll in and out. If I hold in my space bar, I can drag the drawing around, you can see. So I'm holding in my space bar to drag and move things around, or I can zoom in if there's an area I need to zoom in on. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click up here where it says draw wall. And then there, notice it says wall and room. We wanna make sure you choose wall. Room actually draws a box, and I have yet to see a house that's square. So we're gonna go ahead and just choose wall. And then you have three options, concrete, drywall, and glass. So basically it's just this. Don't worry if the outside of your home is not made of concrete, but I use concrete for exterior walls, drywall typically for interior walls, unless you know there's stone or something there, then maybe you can add some concrete. And then we use glass for all windows. Now, typically I'm not too picky on this and I've had really good luck. I think Design Center plays it safe, pretty well. And actually, I'm gonna be doing a video here very soon, actually, because I'm curious about it, is to how how good a job this really does, how accurate is Design Center. But it's really served me well by just not overthinking it. Exterior walls are concrete, interior walls are drywall, and then glass is glass with your windows. So we'll go ahead and get these drawn in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the outside walls done first. We'll go ahead and choose concrete. And that gives you some instructions here. Left click the mouse choose escape or right click to cancel it. So what that means is if you draw something and you wanna keep going, you can do that. And then right click allows you to cancel. So you're not drawing anymore, okay? So let me get rid of these. And, and if you make a mistake, you can, if you got the little um, regular cursor here, you can bring it over here, click on your line. This will all pop up. You can change the kind it is. You can do a couple of little angly things, but we're just gonna delete these. So you can delete things if you make a mistake. So we'll go ahead and go click draw wall again. We'll start down here in the corner. We'll go all the way up. Now this is a window, so we're gonna stop there. And I don't want it, it just automatically wants to keep going. So if I right click, that goes away. And then I can put my cursor right here and start again. That's what it means by right click. So if you have to go around a window or go around something, every time I want to turn, I click, okay? And then I can zoom in while I'm clicking here too. So I'm gonna click there and then we're gonna to get to a bunch of bay windows. So I'm gonna right click to end. We'll come over here and we'll go down. 
We're gonna turn a corner, okay? Now, you'll notice I went over the door. I typically do. I kind of treat my doors as if they're closed. So um, you'll see me on interior doors. I'll draw as if it's drywall, like it's just a wall, even though we know it's a door there and that door could be open. I typically like to do kind of worst case scenario and have the door closed. And doors are made of wood typically. Some of them are hollow, but for the most part, it's treated like a wall when that door is closed. So we'll come over here. We're still drawing our exterior. So we'll go over here. Remember I told you that area above is a covered porch. All right, so then we're gonna go around here. And by the way, you see how it's putting, how long these walls are? It's kind of a good little kind of gut check to make sure you got your scale right. I'm not asking you to go measure all these things, but if it has you drawing a wall and it shows you it's 19 feet and you're like, that's like five feet, you know you did something wrong. So maybe go back and check your scale again. Um, now this is my front door. I'm gonna go ahead and just um, go right over the top of it as if it wasn't. We do have a window here, so I'll stop and start over here again. All right, and then we're gonna go down around my garage and I'm gonna go ahead and just right across the garage doors. Those are considered exterior walls to me. They're made of metal. And then when it comes over here, it just connects it. It, it sees that you're connecting the box and it connects it. Now you can see how this line's a little crooked. We can actually, with our little hand icon here, click and drag this down and straighten it out if you're a perfectionist like I am. Um, you can absolutely take care of that. So let's go ahead and get our windows. We're gonna go here, click draw. Again, I'm gonna hit the little drop down. I'm gonna choose glass this time, and I'm gonna go hit the gaps, right? So we're just gonna go everywhere. I'm using my space bar here to slide down. So everywhere we had glass, I'm just gonna put glass. And you can see it's a different color. Now, technically there's probably about a foot of drywall in between here, but I just, I mean, you can get that specific if you want to, but typically if it's, all, if it's a bunch of windows together, I'll just draw them together. Um, again, this is to give you a guide. Um, the more accurate you are, the better, I agree, but at the same time, don't drive yourself crazy with it. So you can see we're just getting our stuff connected. So now we got our windows drawn in. All right, so now we're gonna go up and we're gonna uh, choose drywall. We're gonna draw our interior walls now, okay? so. You know, we're gonna go ahead and click on that wall. When you do that, it changes color and you can see that it's um, yet a different color and it's gonna allow us to draw across here. Now there is a door here where there's a gap, so I'm gonna go ahead and just draw straight across and go up, but there is no door here. This is an opening. So then we have a door across our pantry here, so I'm just gonna draw that straight across. Now, if you click from a line to a line, it'll automatically disengage the tool so you can go click somewhere else. If you're turning a corner, you have to click. All right, so there's no real strategy with this. Guys, it's just go and, and get all your walls drawn in, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and draw that across here. These are all interior walls, and then it clicks in, all right? And then we're gonna go ahead and connect these two, and click, and this is the area between my kitchen and my, and like my kinda area. So now I wanna disengage the tool, so I'm gonna right click put up here and draw a line that kind of comes across. That's a drywall wall. And as you can see, I need to disengage the tool again. This is a little closet right here, a little coat closet. So I'll go ahead and draw it in there. All right, because if I have Wi-Fi here, I mean, it's gotta go through a door and a wall and a closet and another wall and a kitchen. I mean, we want this thing to be fairly accurate to what real life is. So we'll kind of come up here. We'll go across this little bathroom come down and connect that wall. Now this area right here is actually open. There is a pillar right here that I could draw in, but I don't want, I don't think we need to get that specific. Um, this is a fireplace. Now this is um, a stone fireplace. However, the stone is only on the bottom half of it. So, and we're not really trying to get Wi-Fi outside my home over here where I would have to go through that stone. So I'm, I'm not too concerned about it. But if you had like a stone wall in the middle of your house, maybe you got one of those center fireplaces, Absolutely, you should draw that in there. You're gonna wanna know. Now the tool's disengaged. I can't click here and draw anymore. So I just gotta go up here and hit draw wall and it turns it back on. So we'll go ahead and finish drawing our wall. So here's my staircase. We'll go ahead and draw that. And I'm just gonna click it to there because this part of my staircase is all open. Um, just right here where it goes down has some walls around it. All right, so that's that. That is literally how to do it. It's very, very simple. It takes a little bit of time. Um, again, having a clean drawing really does help. 
Now, I'm not gonna walk you through me doing on the second floor, so I'll do that as part of this, this video, but I'm just gonna go ahead and, and go over to the second floor and draw it in for you so it's ready. So I'll go have all this drawn ahead of time, and then we'll kind of use that when we start talking about AP placement. Now there's another little trick I do like to do. So I think it's over here in, is it in this one? Nope, it's over here in settings. So if I go to settings, it brings up this, you know, kind of little thing. You can change the name of your floor plan. I like to add a little wall opacity in there. So I like to drag this if it'll let me. Um, so you can kind of, excuse me. So you can kind of see the walls underneath in case you're wondering, oh yeah, those are windows. I like to do that. I also like my device size to be a little smaller. They make these, when they put the icons on there, they're massive. And so I like um, I like having them a little bit smaller. Um, so kind of a cool deal when you're done, you can just exit out of there. Um, we don't have any Wi-Fi in here. We don't have any cameras, so everything's off. Um, and then this, we'll get into this uh, display options here in just a second. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw in the second floor and then we'll come back and we'll start talking about Wi-Fi placement. Uh, we'll talk about some strategies, we'll talk about some settings I like, um, and we'll um, we'll circle back. Okay, guys, so there you go. Now you can see I have the second floor all done in. I got my windows in. You know, it can get a lot of bathrooms and closets and stuff can really be a lot of little drawing, and especially in my house here. So, um, but you notice I kind of drew across doorways. I didn't leave any of that stuff open. We have pretty much solid lines everywhere. I think that's going to give you the most accurate uh, version of this. But once you get your walls drawn in, you can go ahead and we're going to start moving to placing devices on the screen. Um, so kind of a cool deal. Um, as you can see, there's draw cabling. We're not going to worry about that. That's one of the other features we were talking about. Right here, you'll see place devices. So if we click that, it's going to basically ask, well, what kind of device do you want to place? And this is some of the options that you're gonna have. You know, like I said, it can build equipment list for you so you can kind of design what switches you want, all sorts of things. I don't find them super healthy. I think this, or helpful, I think this tool is really great for Wi-Fi planning and camera planning. The cable planning and all that other stuff, I don't know, it, it's okay. It does a pretty good job, but you really gotta fidget with it and kind of get it right. And, and I don't really use it for that too much. So we're gonna go ahead and say Wi-Fi and then it's gonna say, all right, what kind of access points do you want to, to put in here? Now for today's drawing or today's um, plan, we're gonna really focus on like the U6 or you can use Wi-Fi 7 or the 6E. I'm gonna use 6E um, for this, but you can use 7. And the only reason I'm using these is because they have the six gigahertz band on them. So with you know the U6 Pro, you're just gonna get 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. However, with the U7 and U6 Enterprise, um, you're gonna get that six gigahertz band. You know what, I'm gonna change my mind. I'm gonna use U7 Pros for this, all right? That's, everybody's talking about Wi-Fi 7, so we'll just go ahead and place Wi-Fi 7 access points in here. But U6 Enterprise also, it's a 6E, so it also does have that six gigahertz channel where you can see right here. So we'll go ahead and click that. And as you can see, it's gonna just let me drop it wherever I want. So for grins, I'm just gonna put it right here in the middle and it's gonna like, well, do you wanna place another one? And I can put that over here and I can put one over here, one over here. I mean, you can just drop them wherever you want, make it all polka dotty, but um, we're not gonna to wanna to do that. So when you're done dropping access points, you can just right click and it removes the tool. We'll go ahead and close out of this. And right now they're set to hover. Now I really do like the hover, the hover does offer some really great options because, well here, let me get these cleared out of here. So, to, oops, I added too many. So I'm just gonna click on them and choose to remove some. So we'll do two. I think two on a plan is pretty realistic. But what's nice about the hover tool is when you just have them turned on. So if you wanna see your Wi-Fi coverage, you can click Wi-Fi and it'll just turn it on, okay? So, but you don't really know what coverage this one's doing versus this one. So it's nice from that standpoint. So we can go ahead and turn off Wi-Fi or just say off, and then it puts it in hover mode. So then you can kind of see, I mean, obviously we wanna see them with the both on, on at the same time, but I also like to just see what one is doing, right? How good a coverage am I getting just from one 
access point. And so that's one of the reasons why I do like the hover thing. However, when you're designing Wi-Fi, we want to kind of see this. And when we move it around, we want to, you know, the further away you move this, the more your gaps come into play. But you can see by having the different kind of walls drawn in here, it'll adjust your coverage based on where you have it. So, um, and then you can see how big the icons are. That's kind of that area I was telling you where I just think the icons are just ginormous. I don't know why they're so big. So I'm going to make mine a little bit smaller there. Um, and you can uh, change the image opacity, you know, if you want to, it kind of makes, makes it a little bit more see-through, but I do, I usually just mess with the walls a little bit so you can kind of see what's underneath of them. And I like my, my icons smaller. It's just personal preference, um, because I just think they're ginormous. I, to me, this feels like it's more scale, but it doesn't change your signal. Just so you know, you can make the images however big you want. It doesn't change your scale. So, now you can just kind of place your APs. And so you're gonna know what these rooms are in your house. So for right, for me, this is my entryway. Um, and so it's it's right inside, it's kind of not one of the main areas. This is where we drop our coats or, or whatever when we come in um, from the garage. You can see we have a little powder room over here. And then this is our kitchen. So now typically, I'm gonna kind of skip ahead here to strategizing a little bit. Now typically, um, I don't, look for green everywhere per se, right? So if you come down here, uh, nope, that doesn't zoom on. So you can see down here where it has this signal. Minus 46 dB, right? Now, I don't know if you guys know your, your ranges here, or this is what this is kind of for, but typically my rule of thumb is, is that minus 72 and below uh, or lower numbers is typically where I try to stay with my Wi-Fi coverage. Where you start getting up the minus 75s, minus 80s, you're gonna get some, you could get some Wi-Fi um, problems. Now, obviously the stronger, the better, right? But I think people get a little bit lost and are like, I need every square inch of this to be covered with green and on my second floor. So they start adding APs all over the place and you typically don't need that, right? You just, you just don't. So something I want to kind of point out here is when you go over here to your display options, right now we're looking at five gigahertz, okay? But if I look at, if I switch this to 2.4, you can see my coverage changes, all right? So let me turn off Wi-Fi here and just hover over this one. You can see if I hover over just this one right here, my whole house is green on 2.4. And if I hover over this one, my whole house is almost green on 2.4. So again, it just depends on what you're looking for, you know. So when I design this, I typically design with five gigahertz or six gigahertz coverage because A, that's gonna be what we want our streaming devices to connect to if you are if you have to, um, if you're not gonna hardwire them, you're gonna go all Wi-Fi, right? So we want good five gigahertz coverage in the house. That's my typically my rule of thumb. I want good five gigahertz coverage in the home. 2.4 is gonna blast through walls, it's gonna travel better, it's a lower frequency, but typically only like little smart home devices and doorbell, or not doorbells, garage door openers and things like that are gonna use the 2.4 band. Most everything is gonna be on this five gigahertz. So you want a good five gigahertz coverage throughout your house. The other thing you wanna think of too is where you're gonna need coverage. So if you entertain in your garage like we do, you know, we'll have Husker parties or something, have our neighbors over and we're out and about in our garage, we want that signal to be good in there. So you could either add an access point out there or you can place your interior access point near the garage so it bleeds out into it. Um, and this is typically how, this is how I have mine set up today. I have an access point sitting right here and one right here in the middle, and I do not have any coverage issues in any bit of my house. As a matter of fact, I have a YouTube video out there where I actually went from four access points. I have one in my basement, two on my main floor, and one on my second floor, and I actually went down to just one access point. I think it was this one right here, and went and did, uh, went and measured the Wi-Fi coverage in my house, made sure I was connected everywhere, and one single access point covered my entire house. I never disconnected once. So again, I have four. Obviously, not every little square inch is green, but that's okay. You don't need that. 
um, people get a little bit too carried away. But think about where you're gonna need Wi-Fi coverage. Maybe in your home, you're gonna use wireless cameras outside. And so, you know, you gotta maybe place these a little bit more centrally located or near the edge of the house to make sure you get that good coverage there. Um, it really depends in your home. Um, I typically recommend high traffic areas where you're gonna be a lot to make sure you have good coverage. Do I care if I have great coverage over here in my pantry? No, I'm not surfing in my pantry. I'm not doing anything in my pantry. Unless I had some bunch of devices in there that were gonna be connected, I really don't have any need for Wi-Fi in that part of my house. Now, this is a guest bedroom. I got good signal there. My kitchen, obviously, we're in there a lot. This is my living room, my entryway. I can get good Wi-Fi to my doorbell by having my AP here. Remember, this is all open here. I just really don't have any issues, okay? So when you place your access points, just don't get too carried away. So we got it here. Now let's go ahead and switch over to my second floor, which doesn't have anything on it. Now you gotta remember too, and this is what gets a little bit tricky, is that you almost have to kind of think of this three-dimensionally, right? This is a two-dimensional plan. So downstairs, right about here, where the two is at, I have an access point downstairs. So really, right now, bedroom two is gonna get great coverage. It's gonna bleed upstairs, okay? And I can already see the comments coming, guys. I know there's lobes and it only travels a certain way and there are certain dead spots directly behind an access point. I realize that, but you're gonna get some bleed coverage up to the second floor. You gotta remember, this thing's sitting on the ceiling. So it's basically on the floor of bedroom two. You're gonna get some bleed through. So you gotta kinda almost flip your house up on its edge and think of this three-dimensionally. I typically will stagger them. So I have an access point about here where the two is. It's actually about where this wall is. And then I have one down kind of over here. Um, it'd, be, it'd be about right, right here um, in my bathroom uh, on the main floor, right, right just inside my garage. Probably right about in here is where that would be. So I'm gonna get bleed through right here coverage and I'm gonna get some bleed through over here coverage from downstairs. So let's go ahead and add a drop here and we'll go to Wi-Fi, we'll draw U7. And so, you know, a couple ways you can do it. You could put, just make sure you got good coverage. We could put one on each side of the hallway here, okay? Um, but in my house, I have one right here and that's it. So this is my house, by the way. So I have one right here. You can see I'm not getting green every square inch of the house. Matter of fact, my closet is very white. However, <laughs> I do get great coverage in my closet because it's getting some bleed through from the one downstairs. And really this, like I said, this design center does play it safe a little bit. But you can see, I mean, in my master, I don't have an access point in there. Um, I have one sort of below it downstairs, but I get great signal when I'm when I'm in here. My bed is actually on this wall over here. I'll lay in bed and surf and be, be have full bars all the time. So again, remember this is a tool. It's not gonna be a perfect tool. It's meant to just give you some help. But if you feel better about having a little better coverage in here, you can throw one in this bedroom. And, and then uh, this right here, by the way, if you click on it, you can delete or you can duplicate it. So if you want another one, Maybe you want to put one over here in the laundry room, right? So now you got one in the laundry room, you got one in this bedroom, or maybe this bedroom is better, actually. Or you can do the hallway. I mean, typically they're in the hallways, right, a lot of times. Um, so you could place an extra one if it makes you feel better. Just understand you're going to have really good coverage um, regardless. So my strategy as you kind of look at this is, is, again, just remember to kind of flip your house maybe upright and think of it three-dimensionally, right? Uh, and, and maybe try to stagger your APs because you are gonna get some bleed through. Just kind of be thinking about it. Um, if you hardwire your house, remember like your TVs are gonna have hard lines in most cases, gaming systems. So this is really just like your cell phones walking around and, and maybe a tablet when you're sitting on the couch or something like that. Um, I mean, it's think about what's gonna actually use this too, right? If you have a hybrid hardwired and Wi-Fi network, um, and just your cell phones are gonna connect to these things, you know, you don't have to go too crazy. But this is what my house looks like right here. So my main floor is right here and here, and then my second floor one is right about here, right? You go up the stairs, actually there's a hallway um, kind of right up here, so you go straight across. It's right about here is where my other access point would be upstairs. Um, and it, like I said, 
great coverage in my house. I have no dead spots between the bleeding and, and whatnot. Now, something else I wanna show you is specifically, we chose uh, the U7 Pros because they do have the six gigahertz. So if we click on six gigahertz, guys, this is gonna be the new, the higher the frequency, the less distance you get. So if you are planning on using either 6E or the Wi-Fi 7, you might wanna check the Wi-Fi 7 coverage. Now, typically they have pretty strong antennas in them, I think. Um, I haven't really got to play with the U7 Pro yet. So um, again, it's one of those things where, um, you know, make sure you look at that coverage as well, because as you click through these, the coverage changes. See how it changes as I, as I click back and forth, okay? So I'm looking at good six gigahertz coverage too, and maybe, that's, maybe that reason alone is enough to just put two access points in here, because you know as the frequency changes, you're gonna need that extra coverage. That's more than fine, guys. It's your money, your bank accounts. Everything is your preference. You can't go wrong. But I've I have seen people have you know six access points on a level before because they want every little square inch green. Guys, trust me, that's overkill. You won't need that. And if you got your scale right, this should be a pretty good representation about what you're gonna what you're gonna need for coverage. And that's how you use Design Center, guys. It really is a great tool. Um, it's gonna help you kind of pre-plan your wiring. And then basically you're gonna just need to get a, a, a CAT6 cable or CAT6A or CAT7, whatever you're running in your house, pulled to these locations. These are ceiling mounted typically. And just as a little tip, when you're doing, if you're doing the U7s or the U6 Pros or the U6 LRs or U6Es, um, guys, I recommend put, putting these cables in a single gang box, in a low voltage single gang box. Um, the the access points mount right over a single gang box very well. It allows you to have your cabling in a box. And if you don't, if you decide that you're gonna maybe do this later, you're not gonna do it day one, you can put a blank on the box, just put a blank cover on it, and then you know the cable's there nice and hidden. You don't have a cable just hanging out of your ceiling for a future day. You can put it in a box and then it, it put it in a cover, put a cover over it if you aren't planning on using it. So um, I highly recommend for these, um, these type of access points on the ceiling to install your cable in a low voltage gang box. I think it works really, really well, single gang box. Okay guys, so the last thing I wanna talk about is outdoor AP. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all these, all right? And so now we kinda of have our bank slate. So I have a lot of people asking me about, well, how do I get you know, Wi-Fi in my backyard and things like that, which access points should I use? Now, I'm really prone to Wi-Fi 6. I try not to use Wi-Fi 5 too often anymore, but Ubiquiti has some really nice options for that. So if we go over here to place cables, we'll go over here to Wi-Fi. Um, this box, this device right here, the U6 mesh, is actually an indoor-outdoor, you can see it right here, uh, indoor-outdoor Wi-Fi 6 access point. So if you click on that, we'll bring one of those in, and I'll drop that. We'll turn on our Wi-Fi here. Oh, what happened here? Why can't I? Why am I not getting any Wi-Fi? Oh, I know why, because I have six gigahertz turned on. See, six gigahertz doesn't work with this one because it's only got 2.4 and five. That's why it's not working. Okay, so let's place that again. Wi-Fi U6 mesh right here. All right, now we got Wi-Fi coverage. Okay, so I'll kind of place that here. Now, typically these guys, um, they don't, wouldn't install in a gang box. They're gonna be mounted on the side of your house. But one thing I wanna point out here, let's say on my back porch, I had one right here, so it blasted all over my backyard. Look at the bleed in you're getting in your home. Okay, so kinda understand that. I really like my outdoor access points to be away from my home a little bit, even though I'm still gonna get some bleed through. Um, I like them to be maybe either ceiling mounted. These do have a ceiling mount kit that you can, that you can use um, or, you know, Maybe you can get it more on a corner, you know, kind of away from your house to get you that backyard coverage. You're gonna get some bleed in though, guys. So that's another nice thing about, you know, being able to hover over these is, you know, for example, let's put my, let's put my Wi-Fi uh, APs back. So we'll go here, we'll add two U7s. So put this one here, this one here, right? So now I have my access points, but if you really look at this, you know, these are doing the same thing. So if I, if my strategy was to get more of a Wi-Fi signal outdoors, 
I might not need this guy, right? I can get rid of him, and maybe it makes more sense to put this one, you know, kind of a little more centrally located, turn on my Wi-Fi, and see I still got really nice coverage here in my high traffic areas, but I'm doing it with an outdoor access point and one indoor access point because you're gonna get that bleed through, guys. This bleed through is real. And so I've had a lot of people where they, interior devices connect to an outdoor LP, AP and they don't travel very well. You know, it just, it, there's a little bit of a, a challenge with outdoor Wi-Fi. Um, now, I think this would probably work just fine, but you have to be okay with the fact that when you're sitting on your couch right here, there's a chance you're gonna be connected to an access point that's outdoors. And so, you know, you just kind of have to understand that. I'm guessing that your signal from here to here is gonna be better, but if you were grilling and you came in, you know, your phone isn't just gonna automatically disconnect and connect to the one in here. It's gonna stay connected in there for a while. So, um, you know, typically, um, unless there's a big need to like shoot Wi-Fi all, all across the backyard, I don't really do outdoor Wi-Fi very much. I like to do them in porches, you know, farther away, like under an overhang or something like that. I'll do that a little bit. Um, but even then you can see I'm still getting a lot of bleed through um, with this access point. So uh, it just kind of depends on your circumstances, your needs, um, you know, and, and whatnot. Because I don't have this guy um, and I have one of these in here and it's right here, I get great signal in my backyard too, guys. I mean, I don't have any outdoor Wi-Fi, but I can mow my lawn and my, across the whole backyard back here and I stay connected the entire time. So again, it's just, it's nothing that you truly need. If I scroll out, you can see the Wi-Fi really shooting, shooting out the back here. So um, I just wanted to talk about outdoor Wi-Fi. I get asked that question a lot. Play around with it a little bit, guys. If you have questions, you can always leave the comments, you know, and we can we can talk through a little bit. Um, but um, just understand that, you know, placing an access point near an outdoor area where you need outdoor coverage is also going to give you the benefit of it as well. Okay, guys, so this wraps up the, the uh, Unified Design Center. It is an awesome tool. I use this thing all the time. I hope this helps you get started with your planning, guys. Get the cables there while you're building. You're going to really be glad you did. Um, it, it's an awesome tool. It really, truly is. Um, again, I hope this helps you. Any questions, whatever, leave comments. If you've used the tool and had a good experience, leave a comment about it. If you hate the tool, leave a comment about it. Let's just get to talking about it because um, it's going to help people who watch this. All right, guys, thanks very much. And we will, uh, yeah, we'll see you down the road in a future video.